Hey, so I wanted to talk about this pen. This pen is something that to me symbolizes choosing a commitment for a tool and also to have quality over quantity. Now I don't use the pen anymore. I've used it a long while. These days I'm more of a mechanical keyboard kind of guy, but let me dive into this. Now, a long while ago, I wanted to do better journaling, but I was worried on sticking towards to it. So to achieve that, I decided to invest in a good fountain pen. Now I've grown up with fountain pens. I'm not sure about this generation, but in my generation, we were still learning to write with fountain pens in school. Of course, they were simpler than the one that I have here. I'm gonna put it away because else I'll be waving it the whole time. This time I wanted something that was better. I wanted a high quality fountain pen to really enhance my writing experience. So I got this Parker fountain pen. And the reason I got that one was because I wanted some skin in the game. I'm often distracted and my thought process back then was like if I invest in some good tools I'll probably stick to it a bit more. Back then I was already like productivity minded so getting a fountain pen was a step in the other direction. It was a step to slow down to have more contact with my tools instead of like trying to get more done to when I was journaling at least, I wanted to slow down, I wanted to write stuff, and I wanted to enjoy the experience. And by getting this pen and by making that investment, I was hoping that I could at least stick to it and also really enjoy that moment in the day where I was disconnected from computers and just writing with a pen on paper. Now I was worried. My handwriting is absolutely terrible and I am distracted. If I try something like a meditation app, after like 30 seconds, I'm all over the place because my mind just goes places. This is also one of the reasons why eventually I switched back to keyboards because I just love being able to type straight from my brain into the system. That said, it was a success. I have at least three to four moleskins, one per year, that are filled with journal entries. Probably not for every day because, you know, life gets in the way, but mostly. And I do enjoy that experience. And I think that the pen helped. It's not just the quality of the pen because I do enjoy writing with it. And I was, as I was prepping for this video and I was writing with it again, I remembered, oh yeah, this is a really nice pen because it's still working fine after two decades. But also because it was a constant reminder. It was in my bag. Every time I opened my bag, I would see the pen and remember, oh yeah, I need to journal today. Now, I wanted to emphasize feel because I think it's often overlooked. We as consumers, productivity people, look for a solution to our problem and then very often just look at the feature list or whatever is in there, but not at like how it feels. I've seen it with so many software programs that just try to add everything into it. But if then the application doesn't feel right and you don't want to use it, over time, even though it checks all the boxes, it won't see any usage and as such is actually a waste of time, space or even worse, money when they have some type of $8 a month subscription. So here's a thought experiment for you. Uh, something to think about while I'm rambling on in this video and that is what tool or application are you using that just doesn't feel right? And you'll know which one it is. There's at least one tool that you have that you don't enjoy picking up, but you still think you need in your day-to-day -day work. When we think about how things feel, we often think about our surroundings. I have a couple of quality posters here, for example, and yes, they are my YouTube background, but they're also the thing that I look at when I'm working at the desk that I'm standing in front right now. And for example, this Titanfall 2 poster not only reminds me of the joys that I had when I was playing that game, but even more so about BT, that is the large robot that you pilot in the game, Trust me. Because it reminds me of the symbiosis we have with machines, like for example, our phones. But then the place where we often forget to feel is exactly in that symbiosis. The tools that we use on such a frequent basis that we forget that they are there right up until the point that they stop working or in the case of software, get a change that we really, really dislike. An example of things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis but don't really think about are our keyboards. I spend a lot of time finding the right keyboard. I really dove deep into the mechanical keyboard route at some point and tried a lot of different ways and sets. I'm currently testing these ceramic keycaps, which are really nice and quality. And while you could argue that keycaps don't make a difference, they don't make you more productive or add extra features, they do make me feel more productive. They don't 
you know, stop me from doing stuff. But when I'm taking notes, it just feels better. It feels like I'm in a more luxurious setting. And as a result, I start making more notes. Now, full disclosure, I got these Syra keys keycaps for free. They were on my wish list for a long while before they reached out. This isn't a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid to talk about their keys, but I am getting them to test. So at the end of the video, I will do like a mini review to basically, you know, seal the deal on me getting these keys. That said, the main question and the reason why this video is the way it is, is because that was the thing that I was thinking about. Like, hey, if I didn't get this for free, if I was wanted to have these, they were already in my wishes, would I still buy them knowing what I know now? And that was where the whole thought process came up and talking about quality over quantity and how investing in good tools affects how you work with those tools. Now, if a worldwide pandemic had one benefit, it's that more of us get to work remote. Not everybody has that luxury, but if you do work remote, you have more control over your environment that you work in. And I think that does a lot for people's morale. Even if you have to work in an office, then still having that bit of control where you can pick which tools do you get to use and which things you can put in your desk does more for morale and productivity and working than some dreaded pizza party that tries to prop it up for like 10 seconds while you're getting unpaid overtime. Now, if you do control your workspace, then look around and feel and see what you are using day to day because very often you can upgrade that without it breaking the bank. For example, the chair that I sit on is a refurbished office chair. There's plenty of offices, unfortunately, going out of business. And that means that they have perfectly good chairs that get like cleaned up and then resold. So for half the money, I have a very expensive, well-functioning chair. Unfortunately, mine needs to be replaced because it's over five years old with daily usage and it's squeaking, which is not ideal when you make YouTube videos on a frequent basis. So next to a financial investment in the digital world, there's also a time investment. And I talked about this in previous videos, but if you're picking a tool at one point or another, you will have to commit. You will have to go like, this is the tool that I'm going to use and then use it long time and at full time. And was one of my friends once said, if you can't rant about all the things that are bad about a tool, you haven't used that piece of software for long enough. Now, this is often the other side of the coin. I, as a content creator, often get emails asking from people like, hey, can you try our piece of software? And the main reason I decline is because I'm realistic about the time investment needed to actually fully use that software. I've made plenty of Notion videos. I use Notion on a daily basis to make this channel, like keep track of the videos and stuff like that. And even then I can't keep up, let alone if I just add like a new tool towards my workflow. And I think a lot of people sometimes lose sight of that. And when you look at tools, when you wanna switch around, sure, but re realistic, have like this testing phase where you're just seeing if it feels right, but at some point go like, okay, this is gonna be my Neo tool and figure out what tool are you dropping? Because if you're adding, then you know, where are you gonna get the time to use that? Because it's not gonna magically appear. And how much time, like, you know, how much time will the migration cost? How much time will relearning the stuff cost? I've used Obsidian at one point, which was, you know, really nice. But also, as I got back to Logseek after a while, I remembered that I lost a lot of time relearning, making new systems, and just overall getting things to work. And that investment isn't bad, but you should be aware that that investment is made and that not every piece of software is worth that investment to you. Now, no solution will solve all your problems. The question you should have is, does the tool make you happy, makes you look forward to using it? And one part could be feel, another one could be like, hey, how often are you using it? Are you opening it day by day? I wrote this script in LogSeek and LogSeek is very clunky. I can rant for ages about the things that LogSeek isn't doing. Like it's slow with loading things. Syncing very often doesn't work that well. So there's a lot of pain points there, but I wouldn't trade it for the world because for people that like outlines that love the whole tree structure idea it's one of the best tools out there and having a daily journal meaning that i don't have to think about where i put stuff 
really helps my brain. I've worked with things like Obsidian for a while and Obsidian is super nice and stable and I sometimes miss that aspect of it. I definitely miss the Android app, but you know, I'll digress. But it doesn't gel well with how my brain works and that's different for other people. So when picking any application or tool, the first guide should be is does it spark joy? Do you enjoy using sad software? And if not, then why are you investing time in it? When you see a cool new application or fancy gizmo, realize not only the cost in money to get it, but also the cost in time to learn how to use it and how will it make you feel in the long run. When the honeymoon phase is over, you will have to deal with the actual baggage that comes from the application and that might not always be as good as the first few weeks when you were just constantly playing with all the bells and whistles. Like anything in life, you'll make some bad investments and that's fine and you might have already thought of a few since I mentioned earlier to think about it in the video. Put that in the comments because I am a small channel, I have still have the time to read each and every comment and give some feedback on it. I love reading your thoughts. When you realize you might be knee deep into Stockholm Syndrome with an application, it's time to take that step back. I've had my fair share of mistakes like an overly complex Notion setup for my videos and a Moonlander keyboard that I tried for six months and still couldn't get to work for me, at least me personally. Uh, luckily, because I have a channel, I made like a really successful video on like why it didn't work for me, but you know, not everybody has that option. So reevaluate the time spent with applications and if you don't want to drop them outright which I can think as you invested in it take a break take a break for a week or a month or however long you need and see if you want to return to the application and very often you'll find out you don't miss it or you don't need it of course the time is a bit based on like how often you need to use it and if it's needed for like day-to-day -day work but you know you'll find a way around it uh, one of the easiest applications to look at and drop are any social media apps which to me basically eliminated more more than half of them. The only thing that I have left are Mastodon and I returned to X Twitter, which gets me kind of worried on that whole Stockholm syndrome thing. Why am I there? Yeah, because of you guys. Like, I love talking to people. That's the main reason. It's not because Elon Musk is such a charming personality. Now, before I get into the recap, I need to talk a bit about keycaps. I don't want to send them back. So if you're still here, hear me out and help me sustain my keyboard addiction. I, I can quit whenever I like. I've only got three up here. I got like a whole box upstairs. It's, uh, it's a whole thing. The Syrah keys are really, really nice. I've had some time to play with them now. And as mentioned earlier, to check if I wasn't just like stuck in the motion, I decided to remove them from my daily driver keyboard and just live without them for a few weeks. Now, after a couple of weeks, I can really say that I'm looking forward to having these keycaps on my daily driver again. As someone who types a lot, they've really enhanced my keyboard experience. And sure, they're a bit heavier to type at first, but as my fingers got used to it and the extra effort, I started typing better because like I don't accidentally press keys anymore. And it just feels like a rich type experience. There's something that people with money use, though they'll, they'll probably pay someone else to type unlike me. Now, if you've watched any keyboard review videos, you know that a typing test is not a mandatory, so let's have one. Now, would I recommend them? Not so much for people that are just getting into mechanical keyboards. They have quite the impact on how the keyboard feels, so you can't really fully appreciate them if you're just starting out and they might clutter your choice in mechanical switches or type of keyboard. So I would start with that if you're just starting out. But if you are already fanatical on your keyboard and you want to give it a bit more heft, a bit more fuck, like when you're typing into it, then I highly recommend giving these a try because for me at least, they felt amazing. One thing that I also very much like as someone who's using split keyboards all the time is that they have a special LS keyboard kit giving you like the extra keys you need to be able to use it with a split keyboard like the Fucker LS here that actually has the zero keys on it. I'm going to be moving those to my daily driver right after recording this video. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. So those are my personal thoughts on like the keys themselves. Would I buy them again? 
yes, now that I've been using it for a while, I think I should, because this is something that really enhanced my experience and I've been missing them for the last couple of weeks. Now, in conclusion, always take a step back to understand why are you doing things a certain way. If it feels right, it might be worth spending a bit of time to upgrade it or optimize your process. And consider how something might affect your daily routine. Some things might be draining you more than you realize. And if that's the case, find a way to eliminate them as soon as possible. If you're still here, you're absolutely amazing. Thanks for you know, helping my channel because watching till the end is good for the algorithm, is good for me. It helps it grow. It really means like a tremendous lot to me that you're still enjoying the content. Remember, you're absolutely awesome. Keep it up. <laughs>